So we are all measured, evaluated, and compared to others since before we are even born. And most likely, we have a vivid memory stored in our brain when we first became aware of this. When I was in the third grade, Mrs. Martin told us to save our Easter egg shells for an art project. So there I was with my crushed colored shelf and a big piece of construction paper. To a creative kid, this was nirvana. No history dates, no story problems to remember. Soon I was completely immersed in this artistic activity. I inhaled the smell of glue as it stuck to my fingers and I attempted to shape the eggshells into flower petals. And I was oblivious to anything around me except the soft sound of shells scraping against paper. And then Mrs. Martin broke through my reverie and said something that would forever change my life. I'd like each row to come to the front of the room with your artwork and the rest of the class will pick the best one to hang in the school hallway. Well, I was so excited because I knew mine was the best. You may see where this was going, but I didn't. So I rushed to the front of the room, elbowing everybody out of the way, and my row stood in a line, and then it was finally announced. Based on the number of votes, Deb, George Bailey is the winner. Ha! It took a while for it to register because I was hearing my name. Debbie Dempsey is the winner. Well, it finally did register when George Bailey elbowed me out of the way so that he could hang his picture in the hallway. I was so upset, it just didn't match up with the celestial experience I had creating it. And then for the first time, I really looked at George Valley's painting. He had taken the tiniest pieces of eggshell and created a seascape with a boat on a lake. I mean, it looked so real and the colors were so vivid that the waves that tumbled through the shore actually were shimmering. And at the top of the paper, seagulls soared in a cloud-filled sky. And then, right there in third grade, I burst into tears. I mean, big sobs, ugly tears, and Mrs. Martin had to take me out of the room. Because the truth was, George Valley's was the best. And that year, Mrs. Martin told my parents at the parent-teacher conference that I needed to learn to deal with rejection. So there you have it. Measurement, evaluation, comparison, rejection, all in one memory. These types of vivid memories get etched in our brain, literally, because there's a part of our brain that wants to make sure that we never have to go through this experience again. So it's like as if every negatively charged event is highlighted with a big yellow warning sign that says, caution, danger ahead. Of course, we don't know this is happening. Now, if you don't have an eggshell moment, there is one comparison that we're all subjected to in our formative years, and that is the stress and pressure of grades. And we quickly learn that the ultimate measure of success is an A. Or if you went to my school with Camille Buskowitz, it was an A plus because she always got the extra credit right. And these grades continue into college. And I believe they have a direct impact on the careers we choose. I remember thinking that I wanted to be a writer. And then, horror of horrors, I got a C in creative writing. I mean a C. C's get degrees, but do they make writers? I didn't think so. I quickly learned that in the working world, grades are interchangeable with things called employee reviews, raises or no raises, or meetings where if you don't speak up, you could get passed by. It wasn't until six years after college as a young stay-at-home mom that I took a creative writing class at the community college just for fun. And my instructor, Ellen Honeycutt, a Wisconsin author in her own right said, I think you should send this to the Milwaukee Journal. And so I did. And to my shock, they published it. It was a humor essay about learning to live Italian. When I married into my husband's family, I remember going there for my first meal. 
There were so many courses that I had to retreat to the bathroom and perform jumping jacks. <laughs> Within a year, I had my only weekly humor calm. And it was in local, and then regional, and even some national publications. So I was living my dream career, right? Except that when I sat down to write, it wasn't with the joy of creating. It was with the fear of the eggshell disaster happening all over again. And it wasn't long after that that I was asked to give a speech. And although my knees were knocking, I discovered that when I talk, people laugh. And I think in a good way. <laughs> so I decided to add motivational speaking to my resume. The only problem was, as the presentation got closer and closer, the only thing I was motivated to do was lay down and take a nap. The stress of this A was taking its toll on me. I wanted to get that A, that elusive A, so that I could be above reproach, above the fear and self-doubt that was clouding all of my thinking and making it more and more difficult for me to achieve my goals and dreams. And it became so much of stress and anxiety that I thought my only option was going to be to quit writing and speaking altogether. You know, I realize there are those of us who strive, thrive on competition. And striving to be the best only brings out determination and, you know, the best in someone. But what about the rest of us? What about the ones who read books like The Outliers and realize that we're inliers? Or books like Good to Great only make us feel that we'll never be great enough? You know, Henry David Thoreau, the great American philosopher, said, go confidently in the direction of your dreams, and you will live the life you imagine. Except the only place I go with complete and utter confidence is in the direction of Dairy Queen. <laughs> and after talking with other audience members and some of the clients I coach, I realize I am not alone. I'm not, I'm not the only one that doesn't go confidently. We start, we st stop, we hesitate, we make mistakes, and sometimes we give up on our dreams altogether. I wanted to see if I could solve this problem, not only my, for myself, but for others. What do we do when this is our reality? So I started to study a little bit about the brain and motivational behavior, and I discovered that the problem is striving for the A itself. It triggers all these past negative memories and events, and it impairs our thinking and blocks creativity. The A triggers what Daniel Goleman, the leading researcher in emotional intelligence, calls the amygdala hijack of the brain. And when the amygdala is triggered, it floods our body with all kinds of stress hormones, and it prepares us for danger. And it gives us only three options for working on our goal or dream. We can fight, stay there in there and fight the competition. Or we can flee, which is when we opt out and don't even try or don't even go for that promotion. Or we can freeze. Gosh darn it, we said yes to the TED Talk and now we're just procrastinating to no end. Well, there is something we can do about the amygdala hijack. If we can break the hold of the amygdala hijack, we open up the doorway to this new part of our brain called the neocortex. It's also been called the seat of emotional intelligence. It's where creativity, our, our thinking, positive thinking, and all of that is released. So how do we do that? How do we open up the door to breaking the hold of the amygdala hijack. I've discovered that we just have to give ourselves permission to earn a C. So I tried it. The next time I sat down to write my column, I gave myself permission to earn the grade of a C. And almost immediately, I felt the stress fall off my shoulders. Creative ideas were coming, my writing was flowing. And even the most important thing, for the first time in a long time, I was having fun writing my column. Once empowered by the sea, I saw its value in so many different circumstances. 
For instance, the sea gives you the courage to try new things. So I started running. I was a sea runner. And when I ran my first 5K, it wasn't out front with the A-plus runners. It was in the middle. Well, actually near the back with the moms with the strollers in case I had to jump in. <laughs> with the encouragement of the C, I even tried belly dancing. Okay, I'll admit I wasn't a C. I was probably like a D minus. But boy, in that class, we had more belly laughs than belly dancing. And I remember I wrote a column about it. And not long after, a belly dancing instructor emailed me and she said, you know, I'm getting all kinds of new students, and they said that you inspired them. See, there's the other beauty of the C. You can inspire people just by being a poor example. <laughs> well, that permission to earn the grade of a C allowed me to write my family humor column for 17 years until my kids realized I was writing about them and told me to stop. <laughs> It allowed me to write and publish my first book, and you can still find it on Amazon, although not on the bestseller list. <laughs> but probably the most rewarding part for me is when I started to share the power of the sea with colleagues, my coaching clients, and audience members. Oh, they were skeptical at first, because let's face it, nobody wants to embrace the sea, embrace the fact that we are average. But I told them, try it, just try it. You've got to live the sea to know its power. And here's what happened. Audience members would email me telling me that they finally were speaking up at work where before they didn't have the courage. I started a sea runners group and all kinds of sea runners ran their first 5Ks and even warrior dashes and things after that. And using it with my coaching clients, I had speakers give their first speeches and writers write and publish their first books. So I'm often asked, but Deb, doesn't this mean that you are destined for mediocrity? And no, it's actually the complete opposite. It's the C that reduces the stress response. The C raises positive emotions like dopamine and serotonin and oxytocin that opens up all the learning centers in the brain. It's the C that lets go of the illusion of perfecting for the joy of creating and completing. The C gets rid of the competition for collaboration. So what would you do if you only had to earn a C? Would you finish that project? Would you start a movement? Would you possibly write a book or give a TED Talk? I've learned that sometimes we just need to hear it out loud from someone who knows the dormant dreams, ideas, and inventions that lie deep within you. So if you need permission, I, Debbie Dempsey DeSandro, give you permission to earn a C. Thank you.